Music. with you right off the bat uh we're gonna look at some tactical uh advantages um and disadvantages to this uh mid 40s produced rifle but we're also going to uh just do a just a basic overview too we haven't been uh we haven't been visiting with this guy for a long time and uh it'd be kind of cool to show you how little i know about it how's that so um, let's get right down to the history of the uh, SKS. This is a Russian one, by the way. If you're going to get one of these, trust me, go with a Russian one. Look around. You can find one that's in uh, decent shape. They used to be really cheap. I lucked out when I got this one a long time ago. Now they're kind of expensive. Who cares? They're worth it. Buy one. Uh, designed in 1943 by Sergei Gavrilovich Simonov. This guy was a genius. Uh, 1943, huh? You didn't think that these things were designed in 43, did you? But they were designed in 43, and so was the round, the uh, 7.62 by 39. And uh, these interesting stripper clips here that held 10 rounds. He has a 10 round capacity. They uh, stepped up uh, both. In capacity to 10 rounds from the, uh, let's say, we'll compare it to the Mosin, let's say, which had the 7.62 by 54R, five rounds, bolt action. We stepped up to uh, mid-size cartridge, 10 rounds, semi-automatic. Uh, huge, uh, huge step up for the Russians. Even the, uh, the, um, the SVT. Is it called the SVT? Oh, we got to visit with that guy again. Didn't I just recently do a video with that one? I'm trying to remember. I think I might have. But what an animal that thing is. Oof. Yeah, the, they were they were coming on strong with some weapons in the uh, in the mid '40s. Boy, I'll tell you that in Russia, they uh, certainly would not have been stopped. And um, these were out there experimentally during World War II. Um, and they were definitely used extensively in the Korean War, which the Korean War was, you know, like 50 to 53. And this is a 51. And um, so they were made from 45 to 58. Most of them were made in the Tula arsenal. Uh, in two years, for 53 and 54, they were ma made in the uh, Izhevsk arsenal uh, in Russia. Just for those two years. Total production. Get ready for this. 27 million. That's what I'm saying. Get out there and find one of these. I mean, yeah, there's Chinese ones. There's a Yugo, Yugo one. I have a Yugo one. I've done videos on it. It was my Widener special. Um, I like it. I would sell it. One of these days I might sling it over my shoulder when I go to a gun show and just put a for sale sign on it and see if I could, uh, you know, get enough cash to turn it into something that... Uh, something a little bit you know spread the collection out a little bit is what i mean this could this could serve as my sks you know but i do love that yugo one i don't know no i wouldn't sell it that's that's that was nonsense i would never do that in the 50s um this thing was replaced by the ak-47 i mean the ak-47 came out in 47 so uh it definitely replaced it uh, as the frontline service rifle, but this thing, it hung around for a long time after that, and, uh, you know, it was used everywhere, and because they made so many of them, they were just, I mean, come on, they were, I'm going to show you, these things are, they're pretty viable, you know, even today, pretty viable. Where should we start, in the back or the front? Let's start from the front. So what do we have in the front here? <laughs> we have... Uh, I gotta show you this uh, this bayonet right off the bat. Let's just take a look at the whole rifle right across the bat. Yeah, so we're gas operated, 
short stroke piston. So what this means is the gas, when the bullet travels down the barrel, okay, and the action doesn't move. Nothing moves here. And when the, uh, when the bullet passes this point, all this pressure now can go up this little orifice that they have here and enter into this chamber where there's a piston. And as the bullet goes from here to here, it's exerting pressure down this piston. Once the bullet exits the barrel, all pressure ceases. So it's timed and made just perfectly where that pressure pushes a piston, which this is a long piston here. It goes from here to here. I'll show you. I'll pop this off and show you inside. Well, you know what? Let's just, uh, let's just do that right now. We'll just go all over the place. We'll open the action. And, uh... I'm a little confused. There we go. wasn't in the right spot. So, here's where, uh, here's where this orifice is, right? It blows into this chamber, and here's the, uh, here's the piston itself. I mean, it's just literally a piston that just rides inside this tube here. And it looks just like a car piston, you know? And the pressure pushes that. Boom. Now, here's why it's called... Uh, short stroke piston because if if the bolt okay if the bolt had to travel this far let's say okay if the bolt had to travel from here to here all right for the whole action from there to there and the mechanism that drove the bolt traveled that far like an m1 grand it's just all directly linked long stroke piston this is called a short stroke piston because it doesn't travel that far at all. It just, it gets blasted with gas and it just, it pushes out just far enough to hit the smaller piston that's in here. Can't really tilt it to show you, but I'll take a dowel here and I'll show you I'm hitting the face of the piston right here. This is the face of that piston. So just imagine this is the long piston gets hit with the blast of gas and it's just enough to go. See right here? It's just enough to go pow bang 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 right and every time this piston hits that piston it gives this just a punch it doesn't push it all the way back it just gives it a shot just like that enough to where momentum carries it back ejects picks up around and comes back forward again that's it. It's just like a blast, just like a hit. Short stroke piston. That's how it functions. And uh, that's how easy it is to kind of uh, take this apart right here. You see how easy this is to take apart and clean. And boom, this is back together again. That simple. Uh, it's a little bit more involved getting this guy out. You push it, you turn it, and it comes out. I could have... I could have just popped it out of there, but it's uh, there's a spring in there, and there's really nothing to see but just a short piston. Trust me. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the design, and then it just has this uh, this very simple bolt travels back into this cover here. You have a kind of like a cool safety that you would feel if you put your finger in the trigger guard. That's the safety. You have this uh, magazine down here that is very, you know, a la Mosin in a way with this follower like this. You know what I mean? But this was very successful for the Mosin, and it is certainly successful here. It works. And you could even load it through here. You could even you could even throw rounds in here like this. Just just toss them in the bottom here, and then close this and and load it. Uh, there's a couple of it, but you won't be able to fully load it that way. Um, you could also, the bolt, the bolt stays open on the last, uh, well, I'm all over the place, huh? We're jumping around. But the bolt does stay open on the last shot, and uh, it's not the f it's not the follower that uh, that does it. Whoops. I kind of slid in there. I wanted to show you that you could, you could singly load the rounds like that, just by pushing them in, like the Mosin as well. So it was like an easy transition for the soldiers, you know what I mean? Because they could, uh, see if maybe a little bit more light is better. The soldiers could 
make an easy transition because it, a lot of the function was the same. You know what I mean? And um, and this is like one of the smoothest actions as far as no matter what you do, you're not going to cause this thing to jam up or anything. It's very, very smooth action, very, um, very forgiving. So these, uh, these magazines here, magazines, these clips here were also not much different than what the Mosin was using, but uh, just a little different, and they had this kind of like uh, curved shape to them. And uh, there is a guide. You see the bolt can go back further, but it's, it's locked perfectly in place where it lines up here with this guide to be right where it needs to be. Now with these things, first of all, when you get these magazines, trust me, take some like brass wool or something, and just run it down the channel. That's how you get these things to work really good. So behind where the uh, where the back of the cartridge sits is very smooth. And then these things work really good. If they're just still all old and like caked up with whatever grease was put on here to protect them from corrosion from like, you know, the mill syrup land in Yugoslavia, wherever the hell they were from, they get, uh, they get all gummed up. But if you clean them up good, they work really good. But you still kind of need, the trick to this is, not up here, you don't push up here, you push at the base, and it's kind of like a one, two, three kind of thing. You're not gonna do them all in one shot. You, it, 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 maybe if you're lucky, you would, but if you try to do it that way, you're likely to fail. The best thing to do is like a quick one, two, three, like this. One, two, three, three. <laughs> and then you gotta remove them because it will get stuck in here if you try to cycle. And then there you go, simple as that. 10 rounds, nice. So, um, what else do we have here? We have a, uh, beautiful stock on this one, right? There's all, if you're into, like, stampings and numbers, there's all kind of, all kind of stuff all over these that you can, uh, play around with. Looking at all kind of numbers and electro-penciled and proof marks and it just never ends. Never ends with these guys. They were really into their uh, stampings. It seems like everybody had a hammer and a stamp to put something on it. It's even like these, these tiny ones like that. What did that mean? There's one somewhere. There's like one little teeny square one. <laughs> what did that guy... What did that guy have to put on it? There's one over here. They all meant something for the... the and I guess in the refurb... And then uh, back here, you have like a hole here in the back of the stock. And this is always, I always dread doing this. You guys better not make fun of me if my finger gets stuck in here. Because this thing is like, uh, it's dangerous. Oh, and maybe I should just use my dowel. But you would push in here. And then, here we go. And that would come a uh, little kit that you had back here. This little kid had, uh, you know, some cleaning tools. Interesting stuff back here. Whatever you want to put in there. I'm never going to be able to get this together. Because I didn't really pay attention how it came apart. There we go. And then, uh, you're really supposed to just... What do they do? Yeah, I almost got caught. See? There you go. And then it's back in there again. <laughs> Luckily. Uh, so, tactics. Let's, let's talk tactics. We got a bayonet. Check out this bayonet. This bayonet is made. It's attached to the rifle. It's made for you to just pull it back and just shoot it forward and you're ready to rock. So there's uh, instant stabbing ability at a moment's notice without having to like pull out a bayonet dig for something and even the unlatching mechanism is very simple you saw how fast if you had it in a standing position shouldered even you could reach forward release it and just flip the gun and lock this into place like that and it's able to lock into place like that because of this recess that you see right here so watch when this butts up against the barrel you could see that See how it's lifting the mechanism up here to go up and over? It does that automatically. 
so you don't have to actually lift this up. I've seen a lot of people put these on by lifting it up and over. You don't have to do that. It automatically has a uh, has a like relief here on the top, so it will push out of the way all by itself. See that and go up and over. That's pretty cool. And then with this half released, you can get your cleaning rod out. All right, so that with plus the rest of what you got in the buttstock is uh, your cleaning implements. Um, we have a fully adjustable front sight here, which is what's really cool. You have, uh, you get a tool like this, right? And uh, this top part of it right here can go right down and fit over the front sight. And then you use these arms here to turn it to be able to raise and lower it. And then you see how the front sight is in here with this pin. You see how it's drifted way over this way because it's sticking out over here. But you would be able to use this. It has a relief on this side and this screw on this side. So you're able to put it in here and turn it to, because it's a resistance fit here, and you could turn it to adjust side to side. So you got windage and elevation right here on your front sight uh, with a tool like this. What does this one say? Cage code 3E2Q7. I think this is actually for AK47, but it does work on here. Um, and the rear sight, we're used to this. This is nothing that uh, we haven't seen a million times. They haven't really changed anything here in 1945. See, still just same graduations. And... Uh, there it is. So uh, the SKS, look at how, look at the smoothness of its operation. Like even if I try to go slow and mess it up. You can see how, check this out, if, um, if we had a round in here, okay, chambered, right? And then we tried to chamber up another round behind it. You could see how that tipped the primer right there. Boom. That's the danger of messing around with uh, live ammo. See, and the uh, extractor will flip right over the round at the drop of a hat without even complaining for a second. And it will stay open on the last round. And you could ma manipulate the uh, safely manipulate the follower here without worrying because it catches on catches on something the follower leaves behind, but it won't uh, it won't close unless the follower is down. And there's a round in there, so that's pretty cool. Cleaning it is a breeze, and uh, as long as you have. The slides, the, the bolts stay in back on the last round fired. And uh, this uh, quick as can be semi-automatic action. I mean, I'm going to throw up a little video here. Look at me. Uh, look at me doing uh, double taps here. I mean, this trigger. We'll check out the trigger here. Let's take a look. I'll load up a few more rounds and uh, we'll check out the trigger. It's... Um, beautiful for something this uh for something this old in this range to have a snappy trigger like that that's so mass produced so like these things are like cheaply made kind of i mean that was the whole idea is that they were you know able to just crank out 27 million of these things another cool thing you don't have to have a full uh you don't have to use this at all but you could even have one that's half full it's not a problem it's not it's, it's not going to complain any way you try to load this thing. It's not going to complain. But uh, let's check out the uh, trigger reset. There's firing, ejecting, rechambering. Here's the reset. It's just it's crisp, snappy, easy to predict. There really isn't much creep to it. The Yugo one I have is a, a little bit worse. I mean, this is definitely better. 
These, in my opinion, were the better better quality, the Russian ones, you know. And, uh, yeah, look at these. What is that? What does that symbol mean? What does that one mean? That one means bliag. Man, they really knew what they were doing. They really did. Simonov. Yeah, and the, uh, and the rounds. So here's the... Here's the... Uh, 7.62 by 39. Here's our uh, 556. Five, so the, the intermediate cartridges, you know, they were all around the same uh, same size. But uh, ballistically, these are still 7.62, you know, still 30 caliber. They didn't knock it down to like 223, you know what I mean? Like, I think that, that other Russian round, that five, what is that one? Five point, I have a case of that. But, uh, I'm damned if I know what to do with it. I'm looking it up. I'm trying to find, uh, 5.45 by 39. I guess that stuff is a little bit more like 22-ish, like these, you know? Like the 5.56. Five, well, there you go. 5.56, five, five, 5.45. Five. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the round it replaced... You know, no more of these uh, these full size monster cartridges went by the wayside. This was uh, it was this guy for the uh, SKS and the AK forty seven, and then uh, the AK seventy four and the AK twelve are the uh, five point four five by thirty nine. Yeah, interesting story is that back in the day when. The Mosin ammo was being sold like you know the this was crazy surplus on the market. Remember you buy those two, those two um, tins, the two uh, spam tins inside the wooden crate for like hundred and twenty dollars, whatever. That was like mad cheap, and I was buying a bunch of those just to have them because I know I was like, well now I, I'll just never have to buy this ammo for all these Mosins and and everything, and I'll just uh, I'll just keep it stored. And one company actually. <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, accidentally sent me a case of the 5.45 by 39, and I didn't even know what the hell it was, you know, and, uh, I called him up, and the guy was like, oh, geez, yeah, just, uh, you know what, it doesn't even make any sense to send, it. even then, that was, it was cheap, even that was cheap back then, he was like, it doesn't even make sense to send it back, it's gonna be so expensive for you to ship it, for me to ship it, it's cheaper, but for you to ship it, like UPS, or like at the, in the mail, what you're gonna have to go through to send ammo, and the weight of it, He's like, just keep it. I'll just, I'll send you another one. You know what I mean? And, and it was like, it was a guy I had done a ton of business with and I, I made it up to him. I didn't just go like, yeah, okay. I, I paid something. I don't remember what it was, but I, I looked out ending up with a case of that. It was definitely double the price of the Mosin ammo. Now I don't know what to do with it. Sell it. There you go. So yeah, I got, you get a million of these clips too. If you buy the Yugo surplus, which is cool. Uh, the PPU Yugo surplus. Where the hell is that? Ah, I got it locked up. I'd show you some of the boxes to it, but but you could take a look online. You're never short of getting them. I have like millions of these laying around, and so will you. You don't even have to worry about where to like get some of these. You're just gonna be falling all over them. And uh, like I said, if you just hit them with some steel wool on the inside, then they get they load as well as mine. They just have to they just have to look that clean and smooth, and you won't have any problem. You should just feel like you know if these if these rim, these edges here are filled with gunk, you toothbrush them out. And then they work really well. They definitely function well. I've seen people struggle with them, but I know they're dirty, and I see them pushing from the front of the round, and you can't do that. you got to definitely push from the base of the round. And just always imagine it kind of like a one, two, three kind of motion, and it'll always work. If you always try to do it on that one shot, it doesn't go, and then they're all crooked and sideways. And and uh, every once in a while, you'll, you'll hit the home run if you just go to do it all in one shot, but for the most part, if you make it a three-step move, you'll never have a problem. And uh, that's it. I'm out. SKS. Is it tactical? We didn't touch on any... What, what other tactics could we possibly touch on? It's, uh, it's a semi-automatic rifle with a bayonet attached that pops out in half a second. The bolt stays open on the last shot, and uh, all right, so it's not magazine fed, but uh, you got 10 rounds, and uh, if you have a couple of these in your pocket that are full, you're going to do all right, trust me. You're going you're gonna to reload just fine. 
Trigger's good. The action is like lightning fast. They're, they're small, quick, agile. <sighs> there you go. Alrighty, so that's the uh, that's the SKS again, ladies and gentlemen. What should we do? Should we go in here? What's in here? I think if I pop this off, springs fly out, right? I don't really remember. All I know is like this was re-arsenaled. All these numbers match. There's numbers all over everything. There's a number back here, here, here. There's even a number. Check this out. That serial number. That freaking serial number is even on here. Where is it? There it is. It's on here. They were not fooling around when they re-arsenaled. There it is. Everywhere you look, that number. So this was re-arsenaled somewhere for use somehow. And uh, I think before it was used at all, it ended up in a crate for a bunch of years, and then it ended up in my collection. And that's where it's going to stay. So you all take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, hang in there. And uh, we'll come back with something. Thanks to Beer Zerker, the Beer Zerker Radian YouTube channel for the music. Always appreciate that. Thanks to Realistic Snapcaps for the uh, awesome Snapcaps here. Gotta love these things. AK 47 uh, users can mess around with these things, doing drills. And then here, the 556, you know, all the. Uh, AR guys playing around with 556. Five, Here you go. Do all those function testing and magazine drills and and uh, <clears throat> the, the malfunction drills with uh, inert ammo. That's the way to go. You've been messing around with your Mosin Nagant. Uh, check out the uh, description down there 10% off and free shipping on these things. And yeah, he's open, he's ready for business. All USA equipment. Places in Arizona, they got all U.S. Equ materials, equipment that are making them. And uh, he stayed open during all this COVID stuff using uh, whatever means necessary to get these things to your door. So uh, short of like a, a slow mail system, uh, you're not going to notice any difference ordering from them. Let's put it that way. So y'all take care. I'll see y'all next time. Take it easy. Yes, yeah.